Hello everyone, it's Maya here, and today I'm excited to share with you an updated transition timeline. It is Trans Day of Visibility, and I thought, what a better time than now to share my updated journey. I first shared a transition timeline back in 2015, and it garnered over 5 million views and quickly became my most popular viewed YouTube video. At the time, I had hardly began my transition and wasn't even a year through my medical transition. I figured it was time I update you guys as I've had countless mental and physical changes since then. It's been eight years, I've had surgeries, I've changed hormone replacement therapy plans over time, and I've gone on this huge journey with you guys. I figured it was overdue. Being visibly trans can sometimes be a challenge, but you guys have been with me for this journey. I've documented for eight years everything from dating to intimacy to hormones to medical transition, surgeries. We've done it all together, and this is going to be a final summary of everything. I am going to be narrating in depth all of my photos and videos over the years, starting from childhood to now. You are going to get an in depth experience experience on my life and my transition like never before. My goal was always to inspire and to educate and to show that we are all human and that we are all trying to be our most authentic selves. Without further ado, let's begin. I was born July 23rd during a summer thunderstorm. My mom would go on to tell me how long the labor was and just how difficult. I was 9 pounds, 13 ounces, and I had quite the noggin on me. The first four years of my life, I was an only child, and I spent much of my time between both Sweden and Canada, the two halves of my family that would make me whole. I had a lot of cousins in Canada. And even though I was born a boy, I felt like my family really saw me during those early years, especially my cousins and my siblings. I feel like they saw the essence of who I was and my feminine energy. I would often wear girls' clothes and play dress up, as my parents would say. I loved all things performance, dance, singing, art. All my proclivities were feminine in nature. But all of that would have to be suppressed when I went to elementary school, because that wasn't normal, and I would be bullied for it. I had a pretty lonely, isolated childhood. I had a lot of bullying in elementary school especially, and I dreamed for the days when I was younger, surrounded by family, feeling just a bit more safe. I would go on to experience my teenage years, which were even more difficult. My body would morph before my eyes and my voice drop to the point where I wouldn't even recognize myself in the mirror anymore. It wasn't until 10th grade that I realized I was transgender and I came across the term on YouTube. And I knew there was something I wanted to do, but I didn't know how, so I graduated as a boy and went on to university, depressed. This video could have been an obituary if I didn't take one last try at life. I'm really excited because I'm going to the walk-in clinic today. I'm going to see if I can get a referral. I'm very excited and very nervous at the same time. I don't know what's going to happen or what to expect. In 2014, I began documenting my transition, taking hormones in 2015, and sharing with you my life and my transition. All the awkward, embarrassing moments, all the amazing moments, like my cousin becoming my hairstylist, going to Pride, sharing a Q&A with my mom about our experience together, traveling abroad, having my first long-term relationship, traveling back to Sweden with my family and reintroducing myself, all the finer details of medical transition, like my hormone therapies, both mental and physical changes. I got to take my mom on a trip of a lifetime for her 50th birthday. We traveled to Thailand together. It was such a surreal moment and something I only dreamed of as a kid. So we just went snorkeling and we are currently in this beautiful, what would you call it? Cove. Cove. So stunning. I felt like I was in paradise on earth. And finally being able to express myself while traveling was the ultimate cherry on top. But I still had reservations. 
I hadn't yet received any surgeries, and I was falling a bit behind in my transition goals. I was living life and I was enjoying the moment, but there were still setbacks that stayed on my mind. So in 2019, I had my first surgery. So I just got out of surgery, as you guys can probably tell. I look kind of f***ed up. I still got the Sharpie on me. I began documenting my breast augmentation journey with you guys. And then I would go on to have my bottom surgery. I don't know, I did fall asleep at some point, And then I uh, woke up and they brought me over to my hospital bed that I would be staying in for the next two days. And yeah, that was the surgery. I was just pretty much just laying there, not doing much. I wasn't really like in shock from having the surgery because you can't see anything, everything's packed up. Hi guys, it's Maya here and welcome back to yet another post-op update video. Today I am doing my 1.5 year post-op video and I'm back at you with another post-op SRS or GRS two year update. The recovery was long and brutal, but at last, after two years, I was finally able to reach a point where I felt healthy again. I went on my first trip post-surgery, which was Mexico 2022, Playa del Carmen. It was such a surreal experience to finally feel at home in my body, to travel through airport security and to a country that I'd never been to before, and not worry about people clocking me or making me feel unsafe as a trans woman, because I felt like I really blended in. I was able to walk on the beach just like any other person, enjoy the sunsets, the sights, the foods, and just exist as myself. I went on a trip later that spring to London with two of my best friends, sharing even more memories that would last a lifetime. So many laughs, such good food, and so many awesome drinks. I feel forever grateful to be in the position that I am now and the journey that I've taken. Although I'm so far moved beyond the point of transition now, I'll never forget little Marcus. There are so many things that I wish I could say, so much hope I wish I could give, but I know that you'll make it through. Wait, you be a pretty girl, eh? Wait. Wait. Beautiful girl. Thank you all so much for watching my transition timeline today and being with me on this journey. I hope that you felt educated or inspired in some way to achieve your most authentic version of yourself. If you're interested in continuing to follow my journey, you can follow me over on Instagram at Maya V Henry. I'm on TikTok as well at Maya V Henry. And I also live stream on Twitch with the same handle. I do a lot of live streaming here on YouTube as well. So don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you will know when I post my next video and also when I'm live streaming on YouTube. We do a lot of get ready with me's, we do recipe videos, and we just hang out and chat and it's really cool chill time. Overall, I've really enjoyed building this community here and sharing my experience with you and hearing about your experiences. Together we've built such an amazing platform and I hope it only continues to grow. I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye!